All right, y'all, we're bringing on the arrangement of Alberto Balsam by Aphex Twin. Hopefully I pronounced that right. To get started, you're just going to have this vocal thing. And then the beat comes in. Sounds like that's just, I don't know, maybe reversed with some bit crush or whatever. Nothing too crazy. Just to, It just sets the tempo for, hey, this is going to be something weird coming up. And then right away, we're gonna get started with our A section. So this track was a lot simpler than I was expecting. It's basically just an A section, then a B, then an A, then a B, and then an A, and then you're over. So shout outs to this person who did the MIDI. Um, I just conglomerated it and organized it. So link for the MIDI in the bio. If you want the Ableton project, you can email me for it. I also do private lessons, mixing, production, all that good stuff. So, yeah. As I was saying, we have this vocal thing that starts. And now the beat gets going. It's pretty simple. You have a kick. This is just labeled other percussion. Then you have a snare. And then you have this big bow. I call it garbage because I feel like it sounds almost like a garbage can getting hit. But, uh, yeah. So you just have your drums. Pretty standard. Bass line. And let's just hear what happens. So in case you're paying close attention, the tempo is actually not 188, it's, it's 94. And so yeah, basically this first this A section essentially consists of a six bar loop. Now you can see how it says two up here, but just look at this. Look at the grid here, how this is one, two, three, four. Again, it says it's doubled because the BPM's doubled up here, but remember, six bars. So I just think it's really cool to note how this is very simple in a way, but it's also such a brilliant loop because the whole time, like, each you just have space for things to breathe and for your brain to know what to listen to for example when this garbage can hits i feel like that garbage can grabs your attention and then quickly this bass line fills in the attention and then you have this little callback synth come in that takes your attention again and then you have the garbage come in again the bass line come in again the callback come in again And they're all very simple things in the sense that your brain can comprehend that very easily. It can comprehend that very easily and it can comprehend that very easily, which I think is part of why this track is so catchy because you're able to hear and take in the loop and remember it pretty quickly. And then after that cycles, then you get this like chain link fence sort of thing, which is lumped into the other percussion. To me, it sounds like someone like rubbing a stick across a chain link fence but it just takes your imagination and your focus so yeah that's just a beautiful loop and you already have a cool chain link fence thing to hear you have the little callback thing to hear the baseline the garbage can so there's a lot to hear and it's also just simple and pleasant so now we're going to repeat that loop <laughs> So you may have noticed, hey, what was this? This is basically like suggestive of the main melody, which is about to come. To me, this is the, the catchiest part of the song, the do 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 do. And then this, yeah. And so we basically get the second half of that main melody just kind of sneaking in here, just teasing us with what's to come. And it makes sense that this would happen because we just heard this loop once. So now we're gonna hear it again. I mean, it'd probably still be interesting to hear it without this. But by adding this in there, it does just say, hey, like something new is coming. This is interesting. Keep paying attention. And there you go. Now it just repeats again. 
And so yeah, so basically this first A section is this six bar loop happening four times on the second of four cycles. You get the suggestion, you get like the foreshadowing, I guess, of this big melody. Then on three and four, you just get the whole loop happening back to back. And so we'll just listen to the rest of that. And then we're gonna hop into the B section. So a lot of people say, Alex, how do you make a loop into something dynamic and into a track? That's kind of the point of some, most of these videos is showing arrangement. So we can talk about these ideas. If you've watched these videos, you already know that. But if not, what happens from white to purple here is very, we just get a lot of change. But notice the elements at play are basically the same. We're not really adding like new, like, I mean, the percussion sound does change a little bit. For example, listen to it here. It's more of a ch -ch -ch -ch. and here it's more of a it's more of a tss -tss versus a ch -ch. but you know it, it's it's essentially serving the same purpose you're gonna get little dabbles of the metal the chain link fence i mean like right there but the important thing to note is that okay how did this go from white to purple why is it cool and different well the kick pattern changed snare pattern i think it changes Maybe changes a little bit the snare pattern. Yeah, especially over here. So yeah, you get a different snare pattern. It is similar at the beginning. You get a different percussion pattern, you get a different bass line, and you get a different melody. So yeah, basically everything changes, but the instrumentation more or less stays the same. And yeah, we're still having six bar loops here. There you go. And you also, I just added this little, you hear this like weird little sample coming. But that's basically it. I mean, you might be expecting something more complicated because it's Aphex Twin, but uh, this B section just does what I described. Basically, the drums change their the way that they're the the drums change their rhythm a little bit. The bass line changes, the melody changes, and then you just repeat that a few times. And we're gonna go back to the A section. So let's just listen to the next A section. <laughs> happened here well we had the six bar loop happen just as it had been at the beginning so we're back to our a section then here we have the loop happen again but this time the kick and snare is non-existent we just have that little metal chain link thing kind of hitting once and delaying down which is nice we're in the middle of the track so it's kind of like a nice almost almost feels like a breakdown or something it's just 
just reminding us of how great this melody is, but now we're hearing it with very few percussion for the first time. So we can really just soak it in. But hey, we're only gonna do that once because now we're gonna bring the kick and snare back in. And I've made this pink, whoops. I made this pink because you'll notice it sounds like you get some lower notes playing the melody as well. Almost like harmonizing it. No, no, no. You don't get that elsewhere in the track, for example. But here. I think it just adds a little bit more drama to the melody. That makes sense that you would add more drama because we've heard it several times now and usually it's nice to variate things, or at least in this case, at least. So we're gonna go back into the B section. Only difference here, or the main difference at least, it might be the only difference. I didn't look that closely at this, but you're gonna get this additional melody here. And that's just gonna play on top of the B section. That's that's about it. this nice little reverse thing which is just a cool way to bring us back to the A. I want to check something real quick so you'll notice that yeah that's what I was checking for so the snare is actually more powerful here hear that Yeah, there's actually a, a, a few differences here. Okay, so this A section is actually a bit different. It's mostly in the drums, so you'll notice that the snare is more powerful. It sounds like maybe it's even using the same garbage sample to layer on it. I'm not positive, but um, just, just listen to the drums here versus earlier. <laughs> Yeah, how clean that snare is versus here. You also notice that you're getting some of that steel gate sound happening here in the other percussion. It's not happening over here. All right, so after 12 measures of the more intense drums with also, we're not, we don't really have the melodic content here. We're gonna come back into the main groove. We're gonna have a little chain link fence still. Let me, I'll add that in as we go. Uh, so it's slightly different with the percussion, but pretty much, pretty much back to the beginning here.
And there you have it. We're done. So yeah, like I said, pretty simple. So we just have an A and a B section. We just flip back and forth between them. We get a little variation from A section one to A section two by having the drums drop out here. And then we get variation in B section two versus B one by having this additional melody thrown on top. Then we just go back to the A section with some harder drums, eventually just flying, floating back into the melody rather, and then just easing out the drums, easing out some elements, have a little peaceful ending to the track. So yeah, if you thought this was cool, please like, subscribe, shoot me an email if you want the Ableton project. Now, if you want any mixing lessons, production lessons, feel free to email me at wilcox.alexandme.com. Just the same email that you're going to use if you want the Ableton project. The MIDI files are in the description to this video. Some of y'all ask how you can support me. I don't really feel good doing a Patreon at the moment, at least, because I'm essentially using other people's work for the most part. But so, yeah, just, you know, buy the artist track. And if you really want to support, you can follow me on Instagram and Spotify. That's helpful, I think. Follow me on Bandcamp, too, because I'm going to have my own stuff coming. I already have some music out. I have more coming soon on some exciting, I have some really exciting projects arriving. So, you know, follow me there. And then if you want to eventually buy that, that'd be cool. But yeah, in the meantime, support the artists whose tracks I'm breaking down and message me from the projects and y'all have a good day. Peace.